are listening to episode number 11 of Smash the Bug podcast. I'm your host, Joseph Maxwell, and I am excited to bring on a a really wonderful person. I've had the opportunity to interact with this person over the course of, I don't know, about the last year or so, and been very impressed with his depth of knowledge and his skill set um, and willingness to help, uh, which is a, goes so far. And it's it's what has made the Magento community, I believe, so special is people like this person. So before we I introduce this person, I do always need to call out that uh, Smash the Bug is available on YouTube and um, Apple Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify. In other words, wherever you go to listen to your podcasts, you will find Smash the Bug there. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future great episodes similar to this one. So without further ado, I'd love to bring on Simon Frost. Welcome, Simon. You're from uh, York in the wonderful country of the United Kingdom, right? Hello. Yes. Greetings from across the pond here. Uh, Yes. Well, it is. It's a pleasure to have you on. Um, I know you're a certified individual. So in other words, you know what you're talking about. So you have you have three Magento certifications, right? Yes, I do. Yes. Um, I got the, uh, the certified professional, uh, which was the associate from Magento yes. 2. Mm-hmm. And uh, before that, I had the uh, um, the uh, the Magento 1, the, both of them, the developer and developer plus. Yeah. So Very I got nice. both of them. Yeah. Very nice. And the other big news that you just shared with the world the other day is that you're writing a new book, which... At least, what in my experience, that's kind of a big project. Yeah, so um, it's um, um, I think I'm realizing just how big a project uh, that is. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I do I do love the challenge, and um, this is something that uh, I've been thinking about for a while. So one, I just decided to just you know like uh, jump straight in and just just start just start doing it, and you know Good like. For you. Yeah. Yeah, no point uh, waiting for like uh, a good time. You know, just, just after, like, exactly. Yeah. Well, and the truth is, yeah, exactly. There's no time like now. Um, may, maybe just take 60 seconds and give us the most shameless plug you can imagine for this book. I want to hear it. We all uh, work with uh, Magento to admin uh, every day, and um, it's uh, one of the more complicated aspects of uh, Magento 2. So uh, in this book, I'm, it's not going to be a basic, you know, how do you write a module kind of thing, because right. there's thousands of those already. This is going to be a deep dive, you know, um, really forensic analysis of all the different parts of the Magento admin panel. Um, so that you can um, take what the, what the core developers have done, and then you can adapt those elements and start producing your own, like, um, amazing interfaces. Well, we have nice. That sounds like a, a such a needed book. I, I know with, even from a recent project that I worked on or that I am currently working on, <clears throat> the, the previous developers, uh, they knew how to build grids in the admin panel. And there was a lot of grids that needed to be built. But mm. it was a great revelation that grids are not grids and forms really are not the only mechanisms that we need. Like there's there is a lot of ways that we do need to present or visualize data. And, um, and it, again, it's not just in the form of grids. And so I'm excited about this book. I, I'm looking forward to, well, I'll just say this. I'll be one of the first purchasers of the book when it uh, is released. So um, hopefully you'll keep us up to date as far as when that release is coming and certainly when it's imminent. Yeah, uh, certainly. Yeah, um, I'm just planning to write to. Uh, write a uh, chapter at a time at the moment and then just uh, release each chapter uh, ah, for like brilliant like, a preview and then I'll be able to incorporate uh, um, suggestions and feedback so nice uh, you'll be able to get your hands on um, the information as soon as I've written it <laughs> great I look forward to that yeah the whole yeah. thing yeah yeah awesome so let's dig in um in our conversations you've definitely uh seem like and again obviously not been through formal interview process for example but like you you seem to have a really good uh uh grasp of debugging of magento and and really you seem like an experienced debugger so i 
and, and this has become such a huge focus of mine just because there's so many developers out there, but there seems like a huge dearth of information as far as how do you approach a problem? How do you solve a problem? So for this experienced developer, meaning Simon, how do you approach a problem that might seem difficult, unsolvable, challenging, whatever the adjective you want to use. What, what is your uh, approach to these type of problems? Mm, right, yes. Well, uh, yeah, debugging, it's uh, an essential skill. And uh, mm-hmm. I think when, um, I, uh, um, I'm presented with a problem. Uh, well, the first thing I do is I, if I think that the error message or something about the bug sounds rather familiar, perhaps there's something that I've encountered in my past, for example, then I've got my own um, like uh, little like a list or growing library of um, problems I've encountered in my past and the uh, accompanying solutions as well. So if I think it sounds familiar, then I'll, that's my first step. Because mm. um, if you can chalk up the whole rest of the project, uh, like uh, the investigation, is um then you can save a, a great deal of time like and i've i've been i've managed to save uh you know hours like by going through this list and then trying things which were already in there and so yeah so that's the first step so um, so let me stop you there though so basically you have like a personal solutions log that you've written down Yes. What, is it in, is it GitHub? Is it like a gist? Is it uh, Google Docs? I'm not asking you to share it, but I'm just like, what is the medium that you usually store this in? Yeah, so I store it in gist. Um, okay. So it always stays uh, with me. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. um, and it's a list of um, common, just common problems that, um, uh, and some not so common ones, which uh, I've come across in my. Uh, in my development and not just like building mm-hmm. stuff for client authors when my like, uh, researching things yeah um yeah so it's um i mean it's one of my uh pro tips is uh, once you've fixed a bug always document the fix um mm, that's so know, good the, the most uh, the most frustrating thing is to like be debugging something and be thinking, no, I've definitely fixed this before. How did I fix it? And you can't remember. So, you have to the, yeah. The <laughs> so yeah, so definitely pro tip, keep a log of all the solutions to the uh, bugs that you have to deal with. Yeah. I love it. Man, that is so good. That is so good. And it's a challenge to me. I, I definitely uh, try to keep some logs, but I, it's nowhere as detailed as uh, every a bug that I face, and it feels like I, I, I keep running into some weird stuff. Um, I assume, do you like version it? Let, let me just ask you this. Do you version it? So, for example, like it's Magento. Oh, I was just dealing with a, I'll talk about this in the podcast we'll record on Saturday, but like I was dealing with some crazy indexer issues on uh, Magento 241 and not sure if it's fixed in 242. I, I've just, I think there was uh, someone, uh, Danny Vercade, I'm probably totally butchered his name. I uh, posted this morning about, uh, on, t- on tweeted out this morning about some of uh, performance updates uh, for indexers in Magento 242. Do you version it or is it just like uh, just a log? Like, how do you keep that relevant? I guess is the question. Mm, yes, yeah, so it's it is kind of versioned in that I will write down like the version number of Magento. Um, it's yeah, so it's yeah, kind of version like that. But I think the version number of Magento is the main thing. Okay. Yeah, um, that's yeah. fair. But yeah, so with this step, um, I only try to spend less than half an hour on this step because this, uh, I think, is like a preliminary step mm-hmm. before we actually yeah. get into the meat of it. So if if we're lucky, we can solve it at this point, and that's the that's the best that's the best outcome. Yeah, um, the, the least time and obviously time is money. Yeah, but uh, if um, if I'm not able to find like a quick fix, so I've not come across it before, and um, then it's on to the ev- evidence gathering stage, and um, so with evidence, you know, it's like um, 
a bug is like uh, investigating a crime scene. You know, you have to invest, you have to gather your evidence like from log files and uh, like Love LMS it, yes. and um, like um, things which a client might have noticed to going wrong mm. and that kind of stuff. And hopefully those things might give you some clues as to what the bug might be or if not, like at least pointers as to where to start uh, investigating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, do you have any examples of when you've had to, or when this the, this first level, this first round of uh, troubleshooting has solved the problem? Uh, yeah, so um, uh, maybe like a, a month ago, uh, we had uh, an issue reported by a client where they were no longer able to save customer records for some reason and this hmm. appeared just um, just like crop up overnight so um yeah with the gathering the evidence yeah another thing that um i suggest is um admin action logs so if you've got if you're mm. on commerce edition um i believe it's built in or if you can install it uh, in uh, open source, then it can be a real godsend in understanding like what's happened. Before. Why did all my products? Why are my products deleted? Is it a problem in the code, or is it? Oh, yeah, I deleted uh, that. Oh, oh, that yeah. stinks. Okay, well, <laughs> I've had that very situation. You know, the other thing is, Simon. Um, I've been just coming across this, finding it really useful lately is nginx or apache access logs and i've been so i see that for example a, a something was changing the database at this certain time and the other thing is um i actually i didn't put this in the book but um the art of e-commerce debugging book but i've so come to believe in created at and updated at timestamps for almost every entity we touch mm -hmm. because yeah. then you can come you can triangulate that that updated at column with a uh, nginx or a pat or a, yeah apache uh air uh access logs and you can start seeing okay what was it a controller that got hit which controller got hit is it a uh, rest api and it starts filling in a whole bunch more pictures stuff that i i never really appreciated that much and so uh that's that was something that i recently come across and i was just i've been used i've used that the last few days uh and that's but that's been really enlightening yeah, it's um, it's really um, like I said. Yeah, it's like um, forensic. You have to be like a forensic analysis yes. of uh, like the, the crime scene. So like uh, updated at timestamps. Um, yeah, they're really useful. Uh, and combing through log files as well. You know, again, mm -hmm. I'm really, um, really experienced with how to use like um, like command line utilities like uh, the tail and log and the uh, sed and awk and that kind of stuff to oh now well, we're talking it, sed and awk <laughs> yeah, I, I i i'm terrible at that like i i have <laughs> i i'm immediately driven to stack overflow i can do i could do i'm decent at regular expressions but boy when it, i just i have not wrapped my mind around that so kudos to you for getting that those figured out yeah that's that's uh that's another pro tip is that um I just keep a, a quick cheat sheet of um, ah. like um, handy bash commands. Yeah, because, you know, um, I, unfortunately, uh, I'm not superhuman. So uh, I can't always remember all the different like uh, switches yeah. and that kind of thing for bash commands. So when you're, when you're looking at um, in this investigation phase, um, I like to think of it like you're trying to find the footprints of the user and trying to understand or, an, or another process, because it might not be a human user that's interacting mm -hmm. with us, of course. So, like, um, almost like reverse engineering what happened um, mm -hmm. to call the bug, yeah. So that's why this evidence gathering phase is so critical. If you want to prevent mod files from being overwritten or updated at timestamps from being updated as well. Even if, you, even if you don't get a fix at this point, then you've got lots of evidence which is going to help you in the next stage. Yes, it will. You know, I have to I have to take a break here, Simon. It, it's kind of sounding like the TAD framework. 
Do you remember that from the art of e-commerce debugging? So we have the first one is take an inventory. You know, we're gathering the evidence. Second one, I'm kind of anticipating you're going to say, and I could be wrong, but I, I'm anticipating you're going to say that you try to get a, a fix based off of the evidence you've gathered. Maybe I'm wrong there. Mm, yeah. Yeah, that's certainly one. Um, that's part of it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I use the evidence, um, gathering the evidence. Yeah, that's that's certainly useful. It's one technique. Um, the mm. other techniques as well, like um, it, um, you might not need to do a lot of evidence gathering if it's if it's like a, a problem in code you've written or a colleague or like a third party developer has written, then there's probably not going to be as much evidence to gather in terms of things like log files and stuff. Right. The one other thing that has stood out to me in what you said thus far is on a number of these steps that we've been talking about them, you have time limits. Uh, and I assume the reason, yeah. You, yeah. I'm guessing you have two two reasons for that. Number one, just because you just don't want to exhaust a, um, you, you don't want to waste time. Like you say, time is money yeah, on, yeah. A, on a dead end. But also, I'm guessing maybe this is a benefit. I don't know if this is a reason. At least a benefit of those time limits is that it prevents you from getting tunnel vision. Like it's a reset point. And at least it's been very helpful for me in uh, where really am I at? Just, you know, if you, I get so deep in the weeds, w- troubleshooting an indexer or something like yesterday, like, yeah, what's the problem? I'm actually troubleshooting in the first place. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I totally, I totally get that. Yeah. Sometimes I think, um, I've, I've been like, um, stepping through the code so much with XP bugs that I, yeah, I've, I'll be thinking, wait a minute, what am I, what am I looking for again? Or, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yes. Oh, yeah, for sure. So, um, yeah, I mean, tunnel vision, yeah, that's definitely a, a problem you can come uh, come up against, especially with a framework which is so um, verbose as Magento with all these uh, thousands of files. And, yeah, so you can really go down the rabbit hole if you're, if you're not careful. Um, like Xdebug, um, you're just... Um, touched upon it there. I mean, it's, a, it's an essential tool, yes. um, but I do have some like little like rules when I'm using it to stop me from like going down the rabbit hole. Like um, I'll usually like, uh, if I find that I'm stepping into the framework code rather than uh, like client code, um, then I'll step out of that again because it's unlikely. I mean, I have spotted Magento bugs in the past, core bugs. But it's going to be quite unlikely that um, it's going to be a core bug. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you're just stepping through all that core code, that framework code, you're just going through code which is already working. And it's right. going to, it's just going to really like confuse you and like kind of like clog up your like uh, memory. Yeah. Yes. Huh, yeah, I love I like your example there about the uh, the memory issues um, because hmm, yeah, <laughs> I feel like I'm operating still sometimes on 256 K upstairs. And yeah, it's I agree that uh, keeping those keeping the stack trace in XD bug to a minimum, at least your investigated stack trace can can really uh, help to I- increase the amount of uh Capacity to f- understanding what's going on. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. That, that's yeah. a great suggestion. Um, that, yeah, so keeping a time limit is also another good way of um, maintaining your uh, comprehension of the, uh, the situation. Mm-hmm. Then mm-hmm. it stops you just like setting a break point, following it through, and then like two hours later, you're still following it and you've forgotten what you're looking for. And- <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's that's not necessarily ideal. Or for me, the actually the other problem for me though with Xdebug is, well, plugins are the worst here because I use the keyboard, my keyboard F7, F8. I hit F8, I hit step over instead of step into, and all of a sudden I I am completely screwed. I gotta yeah. s- totally yeah. start my debug session because that was the one item that I had to dig dig into. Um, but I guess it just comes down to being a little more careful there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's one of the like um, the hazards of using um, like a, a debug like XDebug. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. there are 
I have heard of um, some debuggers called time travel debuggers where you can actually step backwards in time as well as moving forward through the code. Never heard of that. But, yeah, they're, they're the, yeah, I saw them um, like a couple of years ago, but I never got around to trying, trying one. Hmm. And um, unfortunately, um, uh, the the examples which are on GitHub are now now a bit out of date, and they only support really old like PHP versions, like PHP five. Ooh, that's so, old. That's really old. Yeah, I'm sure it is there. And um, so they're, so they're not really useful anymore, and they haven't been kept updated either. So mm. it's, yeah, that would have been a really great um, a really great help. Hey, but, maybe um, it's debug fork. You never know. Yeah. It, it well yeah it's a uh, it seems like it's in a, an idea which um, is not of, of its time. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's great. So at this point, you've you've uh, built a you've tried the easy stuff, which is a great suggestion. I love that. You've uh, gathered a ton of information. You've been a a uh, detective, an investigator. You've got you've gathered the all the information as far as what you think is going wrong and you've, you're enforcing time limits. This is great. So what's the next step uh, to getting this problem solved? Well, uh, the next step is to uh, try and understand why the bug is happening and then that will allow you to come up with a possible fix. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, um, this is a good point where knowing Having a deep understanding of how all the core uh, elements of Magento work together can really be a benefit because by understanding what should be happening and then comparing it to what is happening, it can often lead you to the smoking gun. Um, mm -hmm. So this is this is what I call the, the comparison technique, where you just take your you you take your broken code or buggy code and then you compare it to something similar like um, if it's a your controller isn't working then you'll compare that controller to a controller which is working and that's a very effective technique for mm -hmm. spotting like things misconfigurations because magenta is a configuration heavy yes. framework and if you don't put the right files in the right places with the right names and the right capitalization, then, you know, things just, um, Magento doesn't like that. So that's a great yeah. suggestion. Okay. Part of, uh, part of the, uh, um, part of the, like the skill set of being a good debugger or a great debugger is knowing when to use which particular Absolutely. technique, which particular book, like, you know, it's like, uh, matching the medicine to the illness. That's right. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's a great example. I love that. Yeah, that that's really good. Yes, exactly. We got to, we have to, um, we have all these tools in our toolbox. The question is, when do we use them, and we want to use them effectively. Because ultimately, if a website's down, we need to use it quickly too, right? So it's not just a matter of the right one. We want to use the right one quickly to be able to get this website back up and online as quickly as fast as possible. It might sound a bit surprising by actually trying to avoid firing up xdebug when debugging. Before I start up xdebug, I always try and fix the problem um, like in my head first mm -hmm. by some of these techniques. Very good. Before, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Xdebug, uh, if, you're, if you're loading it off of production, depending on how you have that set up, it could take an extra 15 minutes to get everything reconfigured whatever to use your local environment as opposed to uh, if there was another solution. So yeah, exactly. Xdebug is not always the very first choice we should run to for, for solving problems. That's yeah. 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 So I think, um, in, when it's um, like a business critical thing, if the website isn't transactional anymore, then you don't mm -hmm. want to waste time like uh, stepping through the code one line at a time. That's right. You, you want to find a, quick solution and that's when your underlying knowledge your fundamental deep knowledge of the system comes mm -hmm. into play because because then you know how all the components work together like 
controllers, resource models, models, yes. like repositories, everything, plugins. You know the common customization points. Mm -hmm. So you know, like like which key events maybe are dispatched. So you know that um, if there's an exception being thrown, when yes. is there an error being thrown, like on the um, place order mm -hmm. step of checkout, then you will know that that's probably going to be something's thrown an exception, possibly yes. in a, like a, a, either a plugin or an event because they have a common uh, customization point. So you can then like narrow your focus to those bits. Um, without having to like start up a debugger and like step through line by line you can you can like uh, shortcut that process a bit uh, mm -hmm. yeah is there anything else you want to quickly say before we move on to our final quick question that i always like to run by uh, our guests uh, so any other de quick debugging suggestions or tips that you found especially helpful or impactful for the work that you do um, if everything seems to be working normally and you just can't figure it out, mm -hmm. then challenge your assumptions. So Good. is the code doing what you think it is doing or is it actually doing something else? Yes. And this, this is a critical um, thing in when when you're using like Magento, it recommends using OpCache, which mm -hmm. is like, a caching layer within PHP, which caches like things like file uh, class names and uh, other bits of code. Um, so there are different like, layers of caching where things can get stuck, and um, you know, refreshing those can uh, really help. You know, so right. You might you might with a with a huge framework like Magento, you can't keep all of it in your heads at the That's same right. time. So you need to just basically take the, like the black box approach and say that I don't need to know how this works. I just need to know that I put in X and I get out Y and that, and I that's good it. enough. But yeah. for, for them, like 90% of, you know, working with Magento, but when you're um, like dealing with a bug, then that's the mm -hmm. time to like, you know, turn that black box into a white box and actually think, is it actually doing what I think it's doing? Yes. Or is being being triggered yeah. somewhere like that and and that's where the problem is being caused or yeah so that's really good very good yeah absolutely I, I think that's that's great uh I, I, just more great suggestion this is this is good um all right so let's talk about what do you how would you suggest if you were to give our audience a uh, a, a a couple of suggestions as far as things that have been very helpful or beneficial to you in your career and in the projects, the problem projects you've completed, the problems you've solved, uh, what would those suggestions or those pieces of advice be? <laughs> Oof. Well, um, I would say the big, uh, the big, big lesson that I've learned is that um, you, you can never know everything and that's okay hmm. because um, like when I was younger and I see this in some junior devs as well, I mm -hmm. thought that, you know, I, on, I, I, I knew everything, you know, like uh, I knew the best way to do everything and how to do everything properly and, you know, and all that. Right. And the problem with that is the attitude is that um, if you already, if you think you already know everything, then what's the point of trying to learn anything new? Of course. So, yeah. So, um, so that means you you don't you're not curious anymore, and you're not learning. Mm -hmm. And if you're not learning, then you're stagnating. And mm. I think um, the then moment for me came when I realised that actually it's admitting that uh, I don't know everything, and um, and that's okay. Well, the big uh, like Zen moments where that's like uh, mm -hmm. you realize there's still so much more to learn, and that's and that's great. Yeah, you know, one of the great examples I like to uh, use, kind of illustrating exactly what you're saying, is here in the states we call it football. I don't know what you guys in the rest of the world call it, but it's that American sport we throw that brown, brown funny looking object 
Uh, it's about like this big, that sort of thing through the air. It's so I know you guys call f- football something completely different, and it took me years to figure out why that was the case, even in that. But but anyways, uh, here in the states, we have football, and um, in January or as excuse me, February, we have the like the the wherever where the, the the best teams play each other. It's called the Super Bowl, and um, the guy that won the Super Bowl this year. Uh, Tom Brady is his name and he is in his forties as a quarterback playing a very rough sport. And yet he won the Super Bowl, basically making him the, he and his team, the best football team in the United States for 2021. It just, it blew me away. I think he was playing arguably one of the best young quarterbacks of best young football teams. And yet he completely obliterated them. And I think the reason is exactly what you were saying. He knew his limitations. He embraced them. He surrounded uh, himself with other people who complimented him. And as such, they made a really good team. So it wasn't like he was out there trying to be the best himself. And again, no shade to Mahomes, the other the other quarterback he was playing. But he he understood where his weaknesses were. And he he totally knocked it out of the park so to speak uh, and and exactly ex- uh, we we don't have to be the best we're never going to be the best but we can certainly by but by understanding that we're able to uh, I think be much higher quality we will understand our deficiencies and we will know when we need to boost those deficiencies and when we need to go ask somebody else for help to help us with boosting those deficiencies mm, absolutely yeah I think uh, um, I totally uh, agree. Yeah, the, with that, uh, um, it, it always kind of reminds me of uh, when Donald Rumsfeld came up with his infamous, infamous known unknowns thing. Um, mm-hmm. Very. Um, there are things we we know or we don't know. And, yeah, absolutely, I totally agree, Simon. This is this has been good. I appreciate you taking the time to share your journey a very practical journey like you're you're in the same boat as all the rest of us we're, we're working to keep lights on at merchants and that's kind of what it all boils down to but uh you certainly have uh, done your fair share of that and learned a lot in the process it's it's obvious to see so um thank you for coming on and uh on behalf of all all of our listeners thank you for uh sharing your advice here in this time Oh, great then, great. Thank you very much, uh, Joseph, for giving me this opportunity to share my knowledge. Yes, well, it has been it has been a pleasure, and I, I know we didn't get to cover everything. There was a couple other things, and I especially want to talk about testing. So maybe we'll have to have you on here in the future. We're going to have to get a good, uh, have a good conversation rundown about testing. Uh, that's that's one of those. You might say, yeah, I don't know. If some people consider that to be the armpit of uh, of, of of writing code, it's uh, not necessarily looked on usually favorably. And I think we need to do some talking about that. Mm, yes, I mean, yeah, no, I don't <laughs> think anyone who says they love their tests. Yeah. Uh, I'm a convert, certainly. Yeah. Good for you. Good for you. That's great. And and I mostly comfort myself. So uh, this this is this is good. So, anyways, it's a pleasure having you on. Thank you for uh, taking the time out of your uh, evening. I guess uh, for you, um, but uh, thank you for taking the time. It's been a pleasure having you on. Great stuff. Thanks very much. See All you right. later. Take care. It was yeah. wonderful having Simon on here today. It was. I, I love the advice and you can just hear is the experience that he has as he's working through solve. He solved a lot of problems and developed uh, a, a system that has really been helpful for him. And if there is one takeaway, just even one takeaway from this conversation today is this. Go start your personal solutions log today. Get going to get open to just Good grief, use Google Docs. Start that personal solutions log. Whenever you deal with a bug, a difficult bug, write it down in there. Uh, Ideally, it's detailed and somewhat verbose, but if you don't have the time, at least scratch a few notes down. Take Simon's advice from his experience uh, and save yourself probably many, many hours in the future as a result of your investment now into your career. So 
Uh, as always, I hope you uh, enjoyed this session and more than just enjoyed it, that you learned something from it and maybe more than just one thing from it. Uh, but it, anyways, it's been a pleasure having you part of this. I'm grateful to Simon for coming on, taking time out of his evening. Uh, and as always, if you would take just a couple of minutes, write us a review, hopefully a five-star review on any one of these uh, platforms that we are part of, certainly at YouTube as well as Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. We would be more than grateful. So it's been a pleasure having you uh, here today. And I look forward to next time where we will be bringing you even more fantastic content.